fractions and mixed numbers on a number line. Alright, so we have this number line where we have placed the whole numbers onto that number line. So we have 0, 1, 2, and 3 on that number line. Now you might say, okay, well 1 half, it seems easy enough to place on the number line. Um, I know that 1 half is in between 0 and 1, and then so 1 half would be halfway in between 0 and 1. And then so we would label that 1 half. Now to look at that just a little bit further, it's the 2 that ex explains to us as to how many parts that we need to divide in between those whole numbers there. So there's divided into two parts, one and two parts. And then the reason that it's the one right there tells us how far away from that whole number that we have to go. It's one of those two parts. And then so we have to jump over that distance from one. So that's why it is that that there is one half, and that's how it is that we place one half on that number line. Same type of problem, we'll look at it another way. If we were to draw a picture representation and draw a unit bar in between 0 and 1 for 1 third, we would know for this unit bar we would have to divide it into three parts, which is the denominator. So to draw, divide it into three parts, we just draw two lines there, and we know that we would have to shade in one of those three parts. Now this is the exact same thing that occurs on the number line in that we use the denominator to know that we just divide in between 0 and 1, we need to divide that into three parts, so we draw two lines, to div we've divided into three parts, 1, 2, and 3, and then the numerator tells us how far away from that whole number that we need to go. We only need to go one away from there, and that's why we go one away, and going one away, we end up at one third. And I'll finish labeling the rest of those. One third, and then this is two away from zero, which is two thirds, and one would also equal three thirds. So I placed one third onto that number line right there. Here we're asked to place one and two thirds onto the number line. Now, one and two thirds, I know that one and two thirds is actually gonna be one whole for sure, and then it's two-thirds. So in between one and two there, that's where it is that I drew the other unit bar, and then I look at two-thirds. To represent two-thirds with this unit bar, I divide it into three parts, and I would be looking at two of those parts. And then so I'll go ahead and shade in two of those parts, along with that one whole. That's one and two-thirds. Bringing that back to my number line, the way that looks is as follows, where it is that I will be looking right here in between 1 and 2 and divide it into three parts by drawing those two lines. The other thing that I'm going to do for this here and the rest of the number line is to also divide those um, other parts into those three parts and just to make it um, clearer as to what it is that I'm doing. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and label 1 and 2 thirds here and then also place my point. I placed one and two thirds onto this number line. I suppose, since I did draw two and three here originally, I suppose I could divide the rest of that number line into those three parts in between each of those whole numbers. It says that it's thirds, and that's why we divided this number line and the rest of those parts into thirds. All right, it's time for you to try. Go ahead and place two and one fourth onto this number line. Copy it down, and hit pause. Alright, two and one-fourth. I know there's already two holes, so I'm going to draw two unit bars. And then I would just be looking at one-fourth, and I know that one-fourth then at this point is in between two and three. I'll draw one more unit bar. The four tells us to divide that into four parts by drawing three lines, and then just shading in one of those parts. So that that there is one fourth. Now bringing that back to our number line, two and one fourth would be right there. Now if I carried that through back to the other parts of that number line, it would look like this here where each of those 
other, in between each of those other whole numbers, is also divided into four parts. That's what that shows showing there. Now, the last thing that I would have to do is to go ahead and write 2 and 1 fourth right there. This would have been right here, 2 and 2 fourths, 2 and 3 fourths, and 3, or 2, 2 and 4 fourths, which is also equal to 3. Here's another type of question that 